Welcome back to Night Mind, friends. I hope you're keeping cool out there in the mist of summer. It is a hot one, isn't it? But if you find yourself struggling, you've come to the right place for a good chill and some deep, dark shade. I'd like to be honest about something when it comes to the content that I cover. I often get... cravings. Yes, I get a taste in my brain for a certain type of something usually kicked off by dry spells or too much of the same thing in the scene for a while. Occasionally, I get a bite of something truly inspiring, and then I want more of it. After our night studying the channel Chainmail Chasers, I found myself wanting more haunted imagery. That kind of high-effort project that puts a lot into its crafted visuals, you know? Or maybe I was just really put in the mood for something red and black again. In any case, that's why we're here tonight. I've known about the very impressive and animated June Archive and Restoration project for a while, but this is finally the time. In July, and uh, not June, when it would have been more appropriate. Anyway, because we're diving into abandoned online archives, and that can always be a little dicey, we've got support from the sponsor of tonight's investigation, our old friends at Surshark. Surshark's name and reputation are well-known and well-earned. They're the only VPN to reach coverage of 100 countries, with the banking of over 3,200 RAM-only servers. It doesn't matter whether you're on PC, Mac, Linux, Android, iOS, a smart TV, Amazon Fire, TV Stick, Apple TV, Chrome, Firefox, Xbox, or PlayStation. There's a Surfshark app for all platforms, and just one subscription allows you to install and run Surfshark on unlimited devices all at the same time. With Surfshark, you've got secure internet access and privacy all over the world and are protected by a strict no-logs policy, keeping even your internet service provider in the dark about your online life. If you come up against an issue viewing any content due to region locking, you can bypass it by just choosing a country server that lets you right through to keep the investigation going. And if you ever need assistance, Surfshark has 24-7 live customer support standing by to help you out. Go to surfshark.deals forward slash nightmind and use code nightmind to get 83% off a two-year plan and three extra months for free. Again, just go to surfshark.deals forward slash nightmind and use code nightmind to get 83% off a two-year plan and three extra months for free. Protect yourself online today. Thanks to Surfshark for offering protection to nightmind viewers once again. Now, let's rewind all the way back to the heyday of the Nintendo DSi. You see, in order to properly comprehend the project we're about to explore, you need an understanding of the hardware, software, and platform it concerns itself with. And while I could very well just describe all of it with some easily researchable info, for the purpose of this investigation, it's a lot better to get the perspective of someone who has history with it. So, I had a conversation with the person I know best who fits the role. My boyfriend, Graffigato. Okay, so you were a DSi kid. Right? Yeah. And for, like, how long would you say? Uh, quite a few years until the Nintendo 3DS launched. And you know all about Hatena, or Hatena? How, how would you say it? <laughs> uh, Hatena. Hatena. Because Japanese pronunciation. Hatena. Yeah, okay. Hatena. Hatena. Hatena Flipnote. Yeah. And Flipnote Studio. Flipnote Studio is the app, and... Atena was a, or still is, I'm not sure if they still exist today, but they're a Japanese web service provider that Nintendo had actually decided to collaborate with for the app because they knew how to handle user-generated content, which is something Nintendo has no experience with. Okay, so from what I know of Atena Flipnote Studio, well, Flipnote Studio was the app, and then Atena provided the service in order to share these things, right? Yes, exactly. What was it like to use this app and, and have this really art-based service just right there in your hands all the time? Uh, as a kid, it was addicting because you would just constantly have a flow of content of just people making flip notes of memes back in the day constantly. Like, that's what you would see the most of. Very rarely would you ever see original creations that were actually really cool to watch like once in a blue moon you would find that and then whoever makes those kinds of flip notes they'd get pretty good recognition for it but until then most of it was um 
I don't want to say crap, but <laughs> pretty crap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, also it didn't help that um, these flip notes would take off in popularity. But the thing that flip note hatena would allow you to do is download each other's flip notes and then make edits to them as freely as you would like and then upload it as your own. Oh my god, so it's kind of like the, the, the TikTok thing now. Kind of like TikTok right now, <laughs> but imagine it being much more obnoxious. So, as you can probably tell from Graffy's experience, Flipnote was entertaining. It was a unique social network unto itself, allowing users to share drawings and animated works, which existed from December of 2008 to May 31st, 2013. The June in this project's title, June Archive, clearly comes from the month in which Hatena Flipnote was out of service. But what is the purpose of the channel? It's given in the video description for the first upload. Flipnote by Jonas. Memory used, 400 kilobytes. Supposed upload date, May 2013. This flipnote has been restored from corrupted data. The archive managed to come in possession of about 400 or so flipnotes that were extracted from Hatana servers immediately after the site shut down. Viewing them in the flipnote menu reveals there is data contained in them. However, the data is most likely corrupted. Usually, we would consider this corrupted data a lost cause, if it wasn't for one flipnote that has all its data intact. It raises more questions than it answers, and it brings into question the authenticity of the other PPM files in the collection, as well as their upload date. This is important to observe. When the service shut down, anything that was contained on the servers was lost. If it wasn't downloaded to someone's DSI, it was gone. The June Archive claims they have remnants from the servers, albeit corrupted, which is what we'll be exploring alongside the channel operator. This first video features the Hatna mascot, a pixel sprite frog, singing a goodbye message on the final day in the form of a song by eternal horror icon and veteran actor Vincent Price. It glitches on the phrase, time so short, before showing us the Hatna frog lying dead. But you know who time isn't that short for? You. Right now you have the opportunity to skip ahead and use your time to watch all of this series. I highly advise going through it yourself first before continuing on with this video. The effort that was put into this deserves its views. I'm going to drop the link that I created for this playlist down in the video description below. Once you're done watching the June Archive and Restoration Project, return to me here and we'll continue. All set? Excellent. Okay, where did we leave off? Right, Dead Frog. The follow-up video is apparently the only flip note of the batch of about 400 that wasn't corrupted. It starts with Mario, accompanied by a song, and what we can guess was a popular meme format at the time. You can't find them. Friends. Where is everyone? The date on this was June 1st, when Hatana's network was supposed to be inoperable. I guess this is just what happens when a city shuts down. The sky turns red, the horrors invade, a giant eye in the sky opens up. But then we see things turn back with the lemonade stand. The next flip note opens at the same location. The archivist writes, if it is to be assumed that the flip notes that follow in the collection are in a sequential order and are around 30 seconds long, there is reason to believe the flip notes document several hours of activity after service shut down. We still have little idea what is going on or why activity persisted after service closure. More flip notes will need to be restored before we can make a conclusion. Where is everyone? Oh, me, no, me, no, me, no. Where did they go? Go, 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 go. They grew up. They moved on, and you, why do you still live in the past? Get it, get it, get it, get it, alright kid, here's your hot dog. Hmm, so, what do we have here? A massive cat clock, featuring a sun, moon, face, and body, overlooking the city in which Hatna's building exists. There's a character asking the stick figure why they still live in the past when everybody's moved on, 
and we've already seen a screen flash by telling us that time's up. Getting a real sense we're dealing with a theme of time here, how about you? But then something breaks the pattern quite fiercely. Hello! My name is Fuzz! Fuzz the Cat! Mascot for the Dune Archives! And from us here at the Archives to all of you out there, we'd like to say... Whoa! We've received a lot of support for the Archive Project. We're incredibly grateful. <laughs> Please be aware that our restoration process takes time, and that we are working as hard as we can to get updates on Archived Files. Thank you for your patience, and thank you for supporting the Archive and Restoration Project. The video description here relates to the initial atmosphere. Happy congratulations for followers, and a note to take caution when downloading archive files. By now, we understand a channel or social account takeover by a hostile entity when we see one, and this activity doesn't appear to be missed by the archive operator. On Twitter, just before this video, they say, We have received multiple inquiries about the management of the Twitter account, and we are grateful for your concern. The issue was not that comments were being replied to, but who was replying to them. The issue has thus been resolved. Expect activity to return to normal. We apologize for our silence. Thank you for supporting the Archive and Restoration Project. So, no, the issue was not resolved, since Fuzz the Cat just breaks through a couple of days later. Thankfully, activity does return to normal in short form, with another video that appeared on June 1st, by the creator Hydro51. Aw oh, man, now I have to add a hundred stars. Dude, it's just a game. It's not like it's your mom. But Starface won't get me if I don't! The stars are growing dim and dwindling in number. But why? Not right. Then there was also something called a star economy, which basically imagine if YouTube likes had an economy surrounding them. Oh God, no. And then they also had different colors of rarities on how you would get them. So like, a green star was for, like, if you were a good little user and properly reporting things that should not be on the service. Someone animated a huge penis. A big old penis <laughs> on my Nintendo DSi and mommy saw it. <laughs> or you would get a red star, which I think was awarded to people who would make it onto, like, their weekly news tab. Just people who actually got a lot of attention around their flip notes. And then there was like blue and purple, but I don't remember what those were for. You could also buy these, by the way. You could buy these? Yes, like you what, could to buy give them. Out? Actually, I don't remember that 100% if you could give them out. But I know that people would give each other stars and they had a collection of them. Mm -hmm. When you would buy them, I believe it was like a uh, random assortment that you could get of just all these different colors, and then you could use them to customize your profile. That explains this particular flipnote. What's more, this did start out with a legitimate flipnote. The creator appears in the comments claiming it, and that's incredibly cool to see. As for the storytelling, we're witnessing more characters within the flipnote service realizing that the world they know has undergone a change. The stars aren't shining like they used to. It's almost as if they've suddenly lost all their value. 
Next up, a flip note of what's described in the video description as a then popular meme for the service, McDoodles. Hmm, help wanted. Welcome to McDoodles, can I take your order? I'd like a way out. What? what? Listen, 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 listen. I know it's hard to believe. And don't panic, but we're all trapped here. There's a dark void encircling us, and it's slowly closing in. And if we don't find a way out of here, we're all going to die. Hey, what's up with the guy in the drive thru You said there's something blocking everybody in the city. No one can get in or out. What the heck? Hey, let me talk to that guy. Get your hands off my headset. Hello? Hello? A letter is a number screen, but missing the R. What for? School Chromebook in the comments section posted an idea, which received love from the June Archive. It's hinting at a Caesar cipher, but there's nothing to decode yet, which means this is just laying out the method for something to come. As for the red sky over McDoodles, this appears to be more of what we've already established. Characters across this big network city are discovering all at once that the end is near. 27 minutes have passed. What? Since midnight on the server from May 31st to June 1st? Now, if we roll back and take a look at the big cat clock over the city, we can see it's 1127. In the context of this universe, the end is coming. Midnight is approaching. The next flip note is largely a song by the artist Fred Blankenberg from that time period, mourning the loss of Hot Nut to the tune of American Pie. The back half, though, is what propels us forward. Remember. Memory is the key to reality. If it burns down and no one remembers it was there, it's almost as if there was nothing there to begin with. That's quite a message in the wake of something like the fall of Hatana, isn't it? With no one left to remember, was it even there? And now we have a new plot device. This item, which we're told to unlock and not destroy. The message that comes before it suggests that unlocking will aid in the process of remembering. And the red liquid is the same color that floods this corrupted vision of Hotnose Flipno City. As for what to do about it? Nothing yet. Same as with a hint about a code. Hey, do you miss Fuzz the Cat? Need another dose of sentient data corruption? Good news, he's back in this video uploaded on June 1st, 2022. My name is Fuzz! Fuzz the Cat! Mascot for the June Archives! <laughs> I like saying that. Today is June 1st. Over nine years ago, Flip the officially closed its services for good. A moment of silence for all that we have lost. Whoops! Left my phone on! Hang on! Let me just answer that real quick. Hello? You get these warm and fuzzy feelings inside for a bygone era that slowly fade and crumble into nothingness as you realize that the good times are behind you. You can't go back! But what if... you could turn back the clock just a little bit? What if you could... change a thing or two? Oh, well, Fuzz, wouldn't that alter the present as well? That's exactly the point. I know you caught those flashing letters during Fuzz's monologue, and yeah, it's one of our favorite things. Secret content. The letters lead to an unlisted video, DSI Safety Parody 2 by Snowy Owl. Hello ladies and gentlemen, it is I, Charles Robert Bartholomew Winston III Esquire. Today I will present some more tips on keeping your DSI system safe and safe and And then new virus is a parasite that spreads from mind to mind and grows in strength as more and more people form memories surrounding it. The more hosts are remember the parasitical entity, the more deadly it roots itself in reality, becoming more and more real each time it spreads. 
We do have hosts, a parasite may even get access to the physical world and cease to be a concept or an idea. Usually, hosts will be unaware they are infected with a memory virus and will continue to propagate and spread the parasite to others. How to prevent the spread of the memory virus in four steps. 1. Isolate the source of the virus. Keep it away from prying eyes. 2. Destroy all iterations of the parasite, visual, written, auditory, etc. 3. Inform potential hosts of their level of risk. 4. Pray this is not already at hand. The video description reads, The team thought they could manage me. Now I manage them. Would you like to be a team member? Oh, who am I kidding? At this point, you already are. Show of hands, class. Who's surprised at the development that Fuzz the Cat is a hostile mimetic? Okay, all of you who raised your hands, you haven't been paying attention. See me after class for remedial assignments. You should know better by now. Fuzz the Cat is clearly gloating. He's waving the fact that he's a parasite feeding off attention right in our faces and needs the June Archive to keep developing. If it's explored any further and the rest of the corrupted batch restored, Fuzz will break into the reality beyond the data. He's already taken power in the channel and associated Twitter account and needs the archivist to keep going. If there's any source to blame the undead activity of Hot Enough Flipnote on, it's whatever thing is calling itself Fuzz the Cat. Now, there is an element of the Parasite's monologue I do want to pick up for a moment. Let's go over that again. Isn't nostalgia just the worst? You get these warm and fuzzy feelings inside for a bygone era that slowly fade and crumble into nothingness as you realize that the good times are behind you. You can't go back! But what if... you could turn back the clock just a little bit? What if you could... change a thing? Oh, well, Fuzz, wouldn't that alter the present as well? That's exactly the point. For what I know of Flipnote Studio and Atena's Flipnote, I know from a video that I watched earlier from somebody called CS Ghost, who really came up on the platform doing stick fight animations. Oh, I remember somebody like that, and they were very fluid animations, too. Something that really struck me from watching that video was that uh, CS Ghost described the feeling that it was not some small thing when Nintendo decided to discontinue it and then lead people by the nose of promises that they would eventually restore it in some form, that it was more than just flip notes or bits of fun animation to share. That, in effect, he and a lot of others lost what felt like a home. Yeah. No, that's absolutely on point. Flipno Hatena had a very strong community behind it and a very active user base. It is impressive what they were able to create that would get people to constantly engage with each other on a fucking Nintendo DSi, of all things. Something that wasn't meant for that kind of sharing. No. Right? And they're also absolutely right in how... There would be small promises or hints of them eventually creating some kind of successor to the service on the Nintendo 3DS. And eventually we did get Flipnote Studio 3D, but the online aspect of it was nowhere near the same thing that Flipnote Studio on the DSi had with Hatena. Not the same thing at all. In fact, it was much more incredibly limited. Consider the time that's gone by from June 1st, 2013, to the day this was uploaded, June 1st, 2022. Nine years of empty promises by Nintendo in hopes of enjoying what was, for a lot of people, a home in their hands. The parasite calling itself Fuzz the Cat is at once aware of the emotional fragility of the audience who use Flipnote, and seemingly bitter about it as if it were a user too. And if this thing was hiding inside the server at the time of its collapse, no wonder it's upset. It was in the perfect atmosphere to spread and gain a proper foothold to enter reality when the servers were shut down. Ah, oh, when the servers were shut down. Just as a mimetic parasite had gained a home for itself to grow and achieve its end goal. That begs the question, why did Nintendo allow Hatena to collapse? 
Any reports you hear appear to be off the record and relate to something actually pretty obvious aside from any notion of profitability. Cases of adults using the service to have less than happy animated contact with a DSI's target audience. Rather than moderate the app or attempt to install safeguards like any company should, Nintendo just killed it. This does bring something to mind though, in terms of story. With so many still confused to this day over why Hot Enough Flipnote was shuttered, it makes you focus more on the idea that they didn't want to tell anyone why. If this mimetic parasite came from within the servers and was already corrupting data, and the knowledge was available to those in charge that there was a sentient hostile mimetic inside the service, what would you do as the owner of that service? Let it spread, or starve the beast. You'd do the thing that you don't want to do, even though you must. Shut it down, and starve the threat. Spare humanity whatever this could turn into, instead of letting it feed while you buy time to find a way to truly kill it. I'm going to wager this potential idea for now. In the universe of the June Archive, Hatsuna Flipnote was shut down specifically to contain the parasite. And now we have the Archivist, engaging their nostalgia and, perhaps, a sense of longing for a home, too. Resurrecting what the shutdown was meant to keep away from humanity. Yes, this is bad. Fuzz needs to keep your attention and keep people remembering and sharing. This is a monster that's getting off of life support after starvation, and it's not going down again. So, want to see what happens next? One stick figure argues with another about whether they can jump 10 feet in the air. A $5 bet is made, followed by the attempt, and... Transfer initiation. Fuzz clearly pulled off something strong there. Terminal relocation. Of just those characters, that zone, or what? We know there's a connection established between two places that wasn't there before. Guess we have to just keep going to see. Hey man! Hey! So looks like the world's ended. Really? That means Transfer successful flow in charging. Time on charge, 30 minutes. This is getting a lot clearer now. Whatever Fuzz is doing through this connection, it's allowing a charge to the machinery of the cat clock. Which, yeah, it's his device clearly. And whenever it's appeared and moving, it's him doing the work. The very first time we saw this, it was maybe five minutes to midnight. Now it's a half hour, and there's an estimated half hour to charge it. Which means if Fuzz doesn't act quickly, it's server shutdown all over again. Remember this thing? I think it has to do with the process for turning the clock back. Maybe, just maybe, it should be destroyed. Alright kid, here's your hot dog. Yes, it's your hot dog. Kid, I said I have your hot dog. Kid, come on, take the hot dog. Kid, kid. Come on, take it. You don't have all day. Wait. Don't throw that. Alright. Let's make a deal then. Tell me who you are. Tell me what's going on, and I won't throw it. This world is at its end. The people who created it and gave it life are gone. It returns to the nothingness from whence it came. Bits and strands of code.
happen to us. The binary code in this video does translate, by the way. Ordinarily, I despise binary code, but in this instance it actually makes sense. So I've got nothing bad to say about its use. It breaks down to, a face without a name is a stranger, a name without a face is lost. Don't forget to remember your name. And now, a turn in direction. What to do about this, huh? Other than acknowledging that this is a pretty good YouTube channel simulator, what I have to say is that it's a brilliant change of pace, and the clue about where to go is in the video description. Flip notes 2THPQW, which means nothing at first glance, but if you're a user of the website Pseudomemo, you know that this is a share link for uploads of flip notes with the ability to respond with drawings. And that's where we end up, on Pseudomemo replicating the hot enough flip note experience in some fashion. Isn't that amazing? Inputs to the following videos through pseudo memo generated progression. Or lack of it, considering the next video is titled Objective Failed, and the description includes zero of four objectives completed. This kind of interactivity within the project puts viewership in control and makes it an ARG, and it's what you needed to be aware of before proceeding. Any prompts you see going forward are the successes or failures of the community to make progress and the results. Well, well, well. Somebody's up late. Huh. You look a little duller than usual. Is something in your mind? <laughs> hey, while you're here, I want you to do me a favor. I need to get my paws on one of those strange vials, but as you can see, I'm kind of stuck. But you can help me out. Use the DSi touchscreen to draw in one of those strange vials and I'll be able to pick it up. Or don't. Mess us up, see what happens. But if you help me out, I'll return the favor. I knew you'd make the right decision. Thank you very much. As promised, a deal is a deal. You'll find that you've received some extra help somewhere else in the room. Anyway, I'll be seeing you later. You can't keep me here forever, you know. Bye bye
the same. Our goals are 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 the same. You might be wondering why I brought you here. In truth, I want to know why you brought me here. It. Can't you feel it? The ticking madness that unites us. It's just what the kids said. Our goals are the same. And now that you're awake, seeming how I still owe you a favor, allow me to revise my offer. Think about it, pal. You and me, together as equals, we can get everything we ever wanted. Together, we can turn back time. What do you say? We have a deal? Why are you looking at me like that? What do you mean, no? After all the effort you put in, you're just gonna turn back now? You and I both know that there's more to this thing than just stupid flip notes! Someone who wants to watch flip notes doesn't need to know the workings of a time machine! If you want to reconsider, now's your chance, pup! All the time you need is right at your fingertips! Just reach within yourself and take it! Take it. And that's, that's what really struck me from the video that I watched was just for a lot of people, you don't think about it that way. And I'm sure Nintendo didn't think about it either, that people who grew up with this, people who were expanding their skills, even if it was just memes, to have that atmosphere, to have that community, something so intimate in the palm of your hands, and formative to who you are as a person at that time, showing off your skills, interacting with others, getting that feedback, to have that kind of outlet just ripped away from you, leaves a hole. It's more than nostalgia, is the sense that I was getting, is that there is almost a painful desire to go back to that place. Yeah. I believe the most apt way to put it is that there's really just nothing else like it. It was its own beast, and Nintendo did not understand what it was that they had. The stakes are higher at this point in the June Archive than they've ever been. It's all too clear that the Archivist is hurting. There's a part of them that really misses the child they used to be. In the time when Hot Enough Flipnote existed, they are aware that this dream has to end. But it is painful. But does it have to be? Fuzz is here, and Fuzz has a time machine. And Fuzz is a mimetic parasite that can burst from one reality into another, breaking the laws of reality. Which means there's a devil's deal on the table. And the archivist, or staffer, knows it. But what happened to them? Is this a dramatic display of actual events? Is the staffer now inside the data? The next five uploads, yes, five, are a loop of the chicken wing chicken wing song meme interrupted by the story at points. I'm gonna spare you all the repetition of that song and give you the relevant info. I saw a falling star, so I made a wish. Afraid of death, I wished that I could live forever.
And so now here we are, stuck on this loop currently, with interruptions. The guy with the sword has an agenda we're still not clear about, and it's difficult to gauge whether the staffer for the Archive is the one mourning the disappearance of friends or not. We are, certainly, on a standstill. And as far as the actions in the interactive portion went, it seems only two of four objectives were completed. The ending decision appeared most important. The staffer rejected Foss. An excellent call. But now they're in danger. Or maybe not. The continued upload activity doesn't have Fuzz's characteristics about it. The latest video is from June 1st. This June. I'm thinking there will be more this year for sure. It's just a matter of waiting. What do I think of the June Archive and Restoration Project? I think that this was absolutely the year to visit it, and I'm thankful that I held off for a little bit. The amount of uploads that have built up in the time since it began makes the dive so rewarding, and enough story beats have rolled out to indulge in it and make some sense of what's going on, as well as the stakes. The theme work, though, is what I have to give praise to even before the very obvious fact of the effort in animating all of this and doing the extra work involved. The nostalgia factor. The exploration of a sense of loss and longing for a home long gone. It's seldom seen in this field especially with something so specific that resonates with others who were part of the Hot Enough Flipnote network. It's a dedicated love letter and soulful examination of what to many would be silly, because it was just more than flipnotes. To those who grew up on it, this was developmental ground. It was a place for friends. It was a home. And would anyone out there, reminiscing on that time, ever be tempted enough to affect all of reality just to get it back? The June Archive is special as a project in this field. Part meditation and reflection on an event in this world and its aftermath. Part story of a hostile entity and its grip on lives from yesterday. And, in its latest developments, interactive and open to replies, just like the media it deals in. The artistry and animation efforts are quality, impressive, and a clear labor of love. We may not always be able to go back to fun times and places and memories we didn't know we'd hold so dear, but we can move forward with this story, and I sincerely look forward to seeing where it goes. That's all for tonight, everyone. Thanks to the makers of the June Archive and Restoration Project. Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Thanks to my boyfriend Graffy for getting into a conversation with me about his time on Flipnote. Thanks to all of you for watching. And thanks to my supporters on Patreon, who make sure I don't have to keep winding back the clock. If you'd like to support Nightmind, you can join for as little as $2 a month, which keeps the channel running and pays for the Nightmind Index, a site where I publish new, undiscovered, and emerging unfiction projects. And of course, you can join me for live Nightmind videos and games that go with the theme of the channel over on Twitch, where I've been pretty active lately. I'd love to see you there, and the link is in the video description. Thanks for joining me in the dark again this evening. Once more, I'm Nick Nocturne, and like the drawings you saved all those years ago, I'll be seeing you again real soon. Until our next visit, sleep tight.